Hello, my name is Stokes Baker and today I would like to talk about how to use Microsoft Excel to conduct a one sample t-test. I'm making the following assumptions that you're using Excel 2003 or its equivalent Excel 365. You know the basics about how to write a formula in Microsoft Excel and you have a basic understanding of descriptive statistics. There are seven formal steps in conducting a statistical hypothesis test. The first step is to state the null hypothesis. The abbreviation for that is H subscript zero. That's a statement of a population parameter. For example, you might say your population parameter has a population mean of some value. The second step is to state the alternative hypothesis. The abbreviation for that is H subscript A. That is the opposite of your null hypothesis. So if your null hypothesis is the population mean equals some value, the alternative hypothesis would be it does not equal that value. The third step is to state or determine your desired significance level. We call that alpha. In most scientific research, we use a value of 5%, which is 0 0.05. We then collect unbiased data, the step four. That usually involves some sort of uh, random sampling scheme. After you collect your data, you use the information to calculate a test statistic. Today, we're going to calculate a statistic known as T. From T, you then can calculate P. P is the probability that the difference between the observed sample parameter and the population parameter stated in the null hypothesis is due solely to chance sampling variation. You then interpret your probability. Step seven, you then compare P to alpha. If P is larger than or equal to alpha, you accept the null hypothesis, which you basically are saying that the difference between your sample and a population parameter is due to random chance. If P is smaller than alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis and you would say the difference between your observation and your null hypothesis is due to something in addition to chance sampling variation. And that differences would then be statistically significant. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Excel to do a one sample t-test. Before we do that, we're going to talk about the model. Uh, the model is based upon the student t-distribution, which is shown by this graph. It looks a lot like a normal curve, except the shape of the distribution changes with the sample size. And we call that parameter actually degrees of freedom. The tails, in this case we're showing a right tail and a left tail, are larger than observed in a normal curve. The equation we're using to calculate our test statistic is this one. We're going to calculate t. t is actually the number of sample standard deviations that the sample mean x bar is away from the population mean mu. So in other words, when we're calculating t, we're, we're trying to see where we are along this distribution. Here I'm showing what are we call the critical values of t, and that those values would be the cutoffs. If we're in either the right tail or the left tail, when we would be rejecting the null hypothesis and accepting the alternative hypothesis. And we'd say the difference is statistically significant. On the other hand, if our calculated value of t is between these two critical values, is between the two tails, then we would be accepting the null hypothesis. In this equation, t equals x bar, x bar is our sample mean, minus mu, that's your population mean, that you stated in your null hypothesis. Divide that by this term right here, which is collectively known as the standard error. 
standard error is the sample standard deviation s divided by the square root of n, the sample size. This screenshot is from a one sample t test I did using Microsoft Excel. And we're testing the following scenario. According to the Centers of Disease Control, the average adult height of women in the United States is 162.1 centimeters. In the study of adult patients in a nursing home, the heights were measured. And then we're going to conduct a one sample to t-test to assess if the nursing home residents' heights are typical of the nation as a whole. So our first step is to state the null hypothesis. So we're going to say the population mean equals the value of described by the CDC, which is 162.1 centimeters. Notice I actually, the way I do this is I put the lettering in one cell, the actual number, and another cell. And you'll see why I did that in a second. You don't have to mix letters and numbers in a cell because you won't be able to use that number for the calculations. You then state the alternative hypothesis. In this case, we're going to say the population mean does not equal 161.2 centimeters. In this case, we're doing what's known as a two-tailed t-test because the residents could have a height greater than the population average or they could have a height below the population average. And we don't know a priori which is the case. So we are going to do a two-tail test. We then state our significance alpha, which is 0 0.05. And then we collect our data. These heights are the women who are in a nursing home right here. And we have 23 observations. Then what I like to do is I like to just write out the parameters I need in my calculations. Since we're doing a two-tailed test, we're going to do alpha divided by 2. We're going to do x bar, s, n, degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. I don't need to do this, but I like to calculate standard error by itself because it makes the clicking a little bit easier. So the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And then we're going to calculate our t statistics using the equation x bar minus mu divided by the standard error. T could be a positive value or a negative value. Unfortunately, the way Excel was written, it only can interpret positive values of t. So what I'm going to do is calculate the absolute value of t. And then I'm going to calculate the probability that our t is due to chance sampling variation, which is p, using a two-tail model. I'll also show you the command uh, how to do that if you want to do a one-tailed model but in which case we'd be having a different null hypothesis. This slide is a screenshot from Excel showing what happens after you've put in your calculations. Uh, what I'm showing here is our model, which is the student t distribution. Again, our null hypothesis, alternative, or stated value of alpha. Since we are doing a two-tailed test in this example, we want alpha divided by two. Since alpha is in cell C9, to get alpha divided by 2, it is equal C9 divided by 2. We now need to get our sample mean from our study. Here's our data, which is in cells A2 to A24. So we use to calculate the, the sample mean x bar is the command equals average parentheses A2 through colon A24. We also need the sample standard deviation s and the command for that is equal stdev dot s make sure you do the dot s and then our data array a2 through a24 we need to know our sample size n that command is count then data array a2 through a24 the shape of the student t distribution is a function of how many degrees of freedom that's related to sample size for one sample t-test, the equation for degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So if n is in cell C13, degrees of freedom is equal C13 minus 1. 
Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but I like doing standard error next. Uh, just makes calculations a little bit easier when you're calculating t. The standard error is s divided by the square root of n, and that command is equal c12 divided by sqrt for square root, and then c13. Then we're going to calculate t. That is x bar minus mu divided by the standard error. So x bar is in cell C11. The population mean, which is stated in the null hypothesis, is C7, divided by the standard error, which is in cell C15. Notice we got a negative value of t. Unfortunately, Excel only handles positive t values of t. So to deal with that, I'm going to take the absolute value of t. And the command for that is abs parentheses and then c16 since t is in c16. That makes it a positive value. And from that, I can then calculate p. Remember, p is the probability that x bar is different than mu due to chance sampling variation as described by the student t distribution. The command for that is equal t dot this dot 2t. Two 2t two stands for two tail because we're using a two tail model. Parentheses and then your argument is your absolute value of t comma degrees of freedom. So to do that we go equal t dot this dot 2t parentheses c17 comma c14. If we were doing a one tail model instead of a two tail model we would use a different command. We'd be using equals t dot this dot RT standing for right tail, the positive value of T, comma, degrees of freedom, and I'm showing you the cells right there. But in this example, we're going to do two tails, so we're using this value. Now we need to compare our calculated value of P to our stated value of alpha. In this case, P is smaller than alpha. That means we're somewhere in here in this distribution, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and we're going to accept the alternative. Now, the reason I'm using the left tail, because notice t is actually negative, which means we're in the left tail. Our average size of our residents in a nursing hall, on average, are smaller than the national average. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please click the like button. Thank you.